The best way to describe Railgun is that it gives you an invincibility cloak on a few Ethereum compatible blockchains so that your activity can't be tracked. There's a few reasons why you might want to do this. First, let's imagine that you've spent a lot of time researching projects and you've stumbled across a gem. You wanna buy into it, but let's say you're wanting to DCA over a period of time instead of aping in all at once. Well, if your wallet is being watched, you've just tipped everyone that's watching your wallet off to what you're looking at. And that's because everything on Ethereum and most other blockchains is completely public and traceable. So now you have to ape or else everyone else is gonna front run you and push the price up, which is no good. This use case is probably most beneficial to whales, which might be you. And if so, please consider donating a like button smash to this video. Railgun also helps maintain your anonymity on chain and reduces wallet labeling by services like Etherscan and Nansen. There are other use cases though that tap into the the real world that might surprise you. For example, if you own a business and pay your employees in crypto, you probably want to do that in a private way so you aren't leaking your employee's salary to the entire world. Not to mention, in some places, that might actually be illegal. In the EU, for example, they have GDPR, which is regulation around data privacy. So a tool like this, as much as senators in the US might want to put a negative spin on privacy, it's actually important to main com maintain compliance in a lot of other places. Now that you know what Railgun is shooting for, no, no. Let's check out the rest of the project. As always though, this is just a review video and none of this is financial advice. To keep your activity hidden, Railgun uses ZK technology, which stands for zero knowledge, and it's very commonly used privacy tech. And it works pretty simply. Step one is to create a non-custodial Railgun wallet, which will give you a zero ZK address. This wallet is available on desktop for Linux, Mac, and Windows, and also on iOS and Android if, you'd per if you prefer to use crypto on your phone. Once you've created a wallet, you simply send any ERC20 token or NFT T into your 0ZK address, and in that process, your assets become shielded and your token balances and transactions become encrypted. And lastly, all that's left to do is use your assets in DeFi however you'd like, sort of. You can't use your assets everywhere based on what I found or actually what I couldn't find. In order to become compatible with Railgun, dApps have to make themselves compatible. I did look for a list of integrated dApps because I thought that that would be important, but I couldn't find anything, which kind of surprised me a bit. Although based on their tutorial screenshots from their docs, it does look like at the very least, you can use these assets with Beefy Finance. Beefy is a partner of the project along with Zero X, Foundry, Polygon, and others. And they've also got a doxed team of contributors with four co-founders and their associated LinkedIn's, so you can go and check them out. It's a pretty straightforward project. However, their tokenomics were pretty confusing, at least to me. So let's get into the tokenomics first, then some stats. Like, is anybody actually using this? Rail itself is an ERC-20 token. However, in their overview from their docs, you can see that it's a privacy system built directly on chain for ETH, Binance Smart Chain, Polygon, Arbitrum, and soon Solana, Near, and Metis. And at least for me, I thought, okay, so there must be wrapped versions of this rail token on those other chains, but no. According to their tokenomics, there is a max supply of 100 million rail on ETH, 45 million on Binance Smart Chain, and 55 million over on Polygon. However, the only token information you'll find on CoinGecko and CoinMarketCap is regarding the ERC-20. So then where might you be able to buy the Binance version? After all, Binance Smart Chain is way cheaper to use than Ethereum. I went over to PancakeSwap to give it a search and it's not there. So how does the biggest DEX on Binance Smart Chain not have this token? It's because it's not for sale on any DEXs. There's no liquidity there. If you did want to buy the non-ERC20 versions, there are Telegram bots that allows over-the-counter trading for them. So if you can't buy them, where did these non-ERC20s come from and what is the point? The non-ETH versions of Rail were airdropped to the ERC-20 Rail token holders and there was never a pre-sale or VC raise for this project for any tokens at all, which in my mind is generally a good thing. So when Railgun launched on Binance, they had an airdrop there. When they launched on Polygon, same thing. 
And there is no bridge to go in between on purpose and they have an explanation for that. From one of their articles, and I'm definitely paraphrasing, they lay out that all bridges to this point are centralized. Behind the scenes, there is a person or small group that holds the user's native funds and then delivers a wrapped version in return. This is a huge risk in crypto and you see hacks of bridges all the time. And that's why projects like Thorchain, which eliminate the need for bridges are so important and it sounds like this project, Railgun, understands that. But still though, why would you have a Binance Smart Chain token that you can't buy anywhere? What is the point? Each rail token native to its corresponding chain represents its own separate DAO. With this model of having a separate governance token for each chain, fees can be distributed between staked token holders trustlessly through a smart contract, which they say is not currently possible cross-chain. Having separate DAOs also means they can evolve independently from each other, and we're gonna to get to the stats on each separate DAO here in a second. I've mentioned DAO a lot so far throughout here, which means the token has the implied utility of voting. But in reality, I'm not sure this is that great of a utility at all. So I've got a question for you. When you're out here investing in research and tokens, would a token that's only utility is that it allows you to vote be enough for you to want to buy it. Let me know what you think down in the comments. So an outside of being a governance token, which may or not be appealing to you, is there a reason to actually hold this token outside of just general speculation like a meme coin, obviously? Fortunately, the answer to that is yes. Railgun earns a 0.25% fee per transaction every time it shields or unshields assets, which goes to the active governor rewards pool to be distributed to participating stakers. This is a revenue share, and you love to see revenue share. They don't distribute the full amount that they earn though. 2% of the treasury is distributed every two weeks, and depending on what percentage of all the staked rail you own, that's gonna determine how much you qualify for. But that means every two weeks, 98% of those funds are just sitting in a DAO. Although this reduces the amount of revenue shared, it's still better than no utility at all, again, outside of governance maybe. Relayers are the ones that facilitate all the transactions and they also need to get paid. So when relaying transactions, a fee is built in as a percentage premium on the gas charged, not on the size of the transaction. So let's say you're using Railgun on Ethereum's chain and the gas is $50. If the relayer is charging a 10% premium, your gas total would just be $55. And on that note, one really great feature about the wallet is that it doesn't matter what asset you send in, you can use that asset as gas, which simplifies things. Let's say you wanna shield some Aave tokens, for example. Step one is gonna to be to send your Aave tokens to the Railgun wallet. Typically, when sending into other wallets, like MetaMask, for example, you'd also need to send some Ethereum into it in order to pay for gas. So you would have two separate transactions. Not with Railgun, though. It doesn't care if you have ETH in the wallet at all. It will take whatever token you have in there and use it for gas, in this case, Aave. On to some stats here. So far, Railgun has handled about $551 million in total volume and earned 1.82 million in rewards. There's a total TVL of 14.86 million across all chains. However, Ethereum has $14 million of that. I was a little confused on what makes up this TVL though. Is that rail that is staked? Is it shielded assets locked in beefy finance? They clarified in Telegram that their TVL numbers simply add up all the assets in a zero ZK address, excluding rail tokens. So even if you were to just send some Aave tokens into a railgun wallet, that still gets counted as TVL, even if it's not locked up necessarily in any contracts. Although if you consider Railgun itself a DeFi project, then I guess it does make sense. As mentioned, there's 14 million TVL on Ethereum and with 3.86 users, that means each wallet has an average of about $3,600 in it. Let's actually go and see who the biggest zero ZK wallets are. That was a trick. We can't do that because they're using Railgun. Have you learned nothing? ERC-20 rail holders are not shielded, however, so let's look at those holders. You might be shocked at that first wallet with 76% of the supply as I was. However, that wallet is from the staking contract that has no doubt 
multiple people in, involved in there. Kind of a bummer though, because we aren't able to see how many wallets are included there. Could be three people for all we know. Off of this concern, I did ask about the initial distribution and one of the community members shared that it was an airdrop to a large number of people. Unfortunately, that's about as vague as you can get, which makes this by far my biggest concern for the project. Does this worry you at all? Recently, I started a Patreon, so if you're a DGen or hodler, come check it out. I have a link to that down in the description. Also, check out this review on Morpheus Network, which, spoiler alert, has a few massive partnerships that I was not expecting and might be good to put on your radar. Thank you so much for watching. If you're still here, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next video.